it's interesting, isn't it? That the idea of being called a Christian was something that was only introduced, I don't know, 15 or 20 years after Jesus died. Uh, and, and probably it was a term of derision by people who were opponents. They were the, they were the Christ ones, you know. And so it, it, it wasn't necessarily something that came out of a brainstorm of let's call ourselves Christians. Um, so prior to that, they were followers of Jesus or people of the way. And uh, I like that idea of people of the way because it suggests something that's more about a journey than a sort of, are you in this club or not in this club? And I think that the term Christian is often used as a sort of badge, you know, whereas I don't think God's interested in whether we wear a badge and whether we're in this club. I think he's much more interested in whether we are in the way. Which way? Well, the way that Jesus uh, embodied and demonstrated and passionately taught about, which is the way of love, of course, the way of compassion, the way of seeking justice in the world. So I think that we'd be far better if we stopped thinking of the word Christian and using it as a noun, a badge you were, and think of it more as a verb, a way of life, something that we do. It changes everything, actually. Uh, it changes the whole paradigm of things, really, because we're not then interested in trying to uh, shift people from A to B. We're interested in trying to move people on in the, on the journey that, that probably they're already on. It's a common mistake to think that faith equals I know, faith equals certainty. Faith isn't that at all. Faith is something that incorporates doubt and questions as part of a journey of exploration. If, if I have certainty, I don't need faith. So on the one hand, I'm saying, this is what I believe, but on the other hand, I'm saying, but I could be wrong because actually these are things that, you know, we're talking about God who transcends human knowledge and human understanding. It, God is a mystery. So all the time, everything I, I think I know about God is, has to be put as a provisionality rather than as something which is an end product or a destination. When you begin to challenge people about certainty and, and begin to introduce doubts and questions, they often get jumpy about that. But when we're dealing with God and, and things of God, it's not like that. We can't have that sort of certainty. So I think that when people have grown up in a, a Christian environment that has given them a sense of absolutes, uh, it, it, it's very, very scary when they begin to sort of have doubts and questions thrown into that. But I think that's where we grow, that's where we evolve as people when we begin to accept the fact that we don't know, we can't ultimately know. And so it, 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 there's a wager involved in this. Faith is a wager, it's a bet. It's sort of saying, I, I'm gonna put my money on this. I believe this is true, but can I be totally and absolutely certain about it? Of course I can't. There is no such certainty as that in life at all, but certainly not in the realm of dealing with, with the transcendent being that we call and know as God. It's strange, isn't it, that sometimes it, it's our trials and tribulations, it's our crises in life that actually cause us to grow as people, let alone spiritually, um, be because that's when our certainties and really our, our complacency is kind of thrown up in the air. You know, an awful lot of people's faith is kind of hand-me-down. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's something they've been, have passed down from maybe from their parents or from other people in the church and, uh, and so they just take it all for granted. And when we pass through difficult times in life and, and big questions are thrown in when something awful happens to us, be it sickness or the death of a loved one or the break of a marriage or financial disaster or whatever it is, suddenly you, you know, it all becomes cloudy. Nothing is as clear cut as it is. And you can't just sort of wave a magic wand called prayer and it all gets better. And so I think it's in those times of crisis that we have to search for God in a new and fresh way. And, and that, I think, is when we really grow as people because then we understand actually nothing is as certain as we thought it was. So rainy days are good and sunny days maybe not so good when it comes to growing spiritually.